Welcome to PlayPianoToday.com. In this video, we'll go through an overview and check out all the features taken from a program titled The Chord Voicings Vault. Let's dig into the main screen of the program. Right away, you can see there's a settings bar. It says choose chord type. And you'll see if you pop that thing, there's all kinds of chords that show up. All the way from simple triads, which are simple three note chords. And don't forget, if you grab the bar over here and scroll it down, it keeps on going all the way down to advanced jazz alterations and higher extensions. Like a university in a box, there's plenty of stuff here to sink your teeth into. But we're going to start very simply with just a major triad. Then all of a sudden, you get a second drop-down box, and that says, now choose a chord voicing. And this is what makes the Chord Voicings Vault unique. There's lots of programs and books out there that show you all different kinds of chords that can be played on the keyboard, and that's fantastic. But this program goes way beyond that. Not only will it show you all those chords, but then it will also show you suggested chord voicings. And voicings are really what make chords come alive. Now, in this program, you're going to see a lot of voicings. But remember, these are suggested chord voicings. Voicings that I found as a keyboard player for many years that sound fantastic when you pair them up with just the right chords. Here we go. At the top of every list of suggested chord voicings, there's one entry that says non-voiced. Now this is the way that the vast majority of keyboard players around the world play chords, just stacked from bottom to top, like you find in the music theory books. So we choose that, and all of a sudden, you get a third drop-down box. And we're going to study that in just a minute, because in there is really where the meat of this lesson is. They're tools to get these voicings under your hands. It's incredible, but for now, let's ignore it. So far, I chose a non-voiced major triad. Now by playing a D, I'm getting a major triad, non-voiced. Now if I played like a G or a G sharp, I'd get major triads, non-voiced. Here it is down low. Yikes, really muddy, right? Now let's take a look at the magic of chord voicings. Let's go up to the second drop-down box and choose one of these chord voicings. See how it says 1, 5, 3, 1? 1, 5. Then there's a colon. Then it says 3, 1. The colon is a separator. To the left of it are the notes that your left hand plays of the chord, the root and the fifth. To the right of the colon, your right hand plays the third and the root. Now let's play the keyboard again and see what happens. This time I'll pick a nice low note. And because the notes are going to be spread out in a voicing, it's beautiful. It's not muddy like the original non-voice version. Open voicings sound fantastic anywhere you play them. Now look at the notes. A D, an A, an F sharp, and another D. Now if I go back to the non-voiced version and play a D down here, <laughs> listen to how muddy that is. It's still the same notes, D, F sharp, A. But if you take it and open it up into a voicing, Man, it's beautiful, no matter where you play it. Now, we're not playing complicated chords. We're playing the very simplest major triad, but it's a voicing, so it sounds great. Now, in just a second, we're going to look at this third drop-down box here. This is really where the magic happens, and you can get these voicings solidly under your hands. Man, I wish I had this program when I was starting out, but I didn't. But now I'm giving it to you, so that makes me happy. Let's go ahead and pick another chord now. Let's take a look at something a little further down. In this top section, it says triads. You've got major, minor, diminished, add to, augmented, suspended, lots of stuff to dig into. We're going to go through that. This section is seventh chords, but let's scroll all the way down. Remember, this bar helps you to scroll down. And let's take a look at one of my favorite chords, a major nine. Let's spin the vault, and here we go. 
If I go down to the keyboard and I play one of the notes on the keyboard, the program says, please, please select a chord voicing. So we're going to go up and we're going to choose a chord voicing for the major nine chord. Let's first again start with the non voice version. It says one, three, five, seven, nine, stacked from bottom to top. Kind of a pretty sound, isn't it? That's the non voice version. A lot of notes in that chord. Look what happens if you play it down here. It's, again, it's muddy, it's kind of scary. But now let's voice it. Let's choose maybe the first voicing suggested there. One, five, three, seven, nine. Listen to this. Wow, that is just so incredibly rich. Same exact chord, but now it's a different open voicing. Now, I know this is obvious. The left hand notes are red and the right hand notes are blue. Just to show you how to play that thing. It sounds great when you start using this voicing in your music. So that's the point, huh? Let's take a look at another voicing. How about uh, the second one? One, seven in your left hand. So the root and the seventh. And your right hand is going to play the ninth, the third, and the fifth, all clustered together in your right hand. Again, the same chord. Totally different sound. In fact, if you're a fan of Steely Dan, that's the opening chord, I believe, for the song Deacon Blues. Now, because in this voicing, the right hand notes are really clustered in tight, it gives it a unique sound up high, but down low, it doesn't sound so good. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's the great thing about voicings. You find specific uses for each one of them, and they really make your music come alive. Just for contrast, let's look at a couple more chords and voicings, and then we're going to take some time and look at some of the advanced concepts. Scrolling all the way to the bottom, we're going to check out some of the advanced stuff. Advanced jazz alterations and higher extensions. So these chords are going to be based on the dominant seventh chord. Now let's choose a voicing. Wow, look at all those voicings for you to get under your hands. Let's scroll down to the biggest chord of all, the 13th, the mighty dominant 13th chord. And we're going to choose non-voice versions. Listen to this. Ah, a nice scary chord you can wake up in the middle of the night and play on the piano and scare your sister. Especially down low. But now let's voice it and watch what happens. Let's choose, how about the first one? One, seven in your left hand, and your right hand is going to play three, thirteen, nine. Listen to this. A whole different rich sound from the same exact ninth chord. Now let's check out another voicing. How about the one that says left hand is one, seven, and right hand is nine, three, thirteen. Again, this one's kind of tight in the right hand. What a great sound. I love to use that in a jazz situation. Let's go on now. Let's take a look at one more chord and a couple voicings, and then we're going to take a look at that third drop down box and really bring this into your hands. How about another one of the advanced chords? This time uh, based on the minor seventh chord, some of my favorite chords. Let's start with the non voiced version, stacked from bottom to top again. Again, this is how you would find it in the music theory book. Root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth until we voice it and bring a different character out. Let's try this one. I believe this is the one that I really like. Oh yeah. That is a 2 a.m. chord. I love that. So you've seen the power of voicings now, but now we're going to go further. We're going to dig into that third drop down box in this next section of the video. And this is where we're really going to get things into your hands. So spinning the vault for fun. And here we go.